Confused and betrayed by her own desires. I couldn't share with anybody because I knew that it wasn't right. I knew the girls are supposed to like boys. A young girl turns her back on God. And I just felt like, why me? Then I really despise God. See what happens when a mother refuses to stop praying. And I looked. So, oh, she is so beautiful. On today's 700 Club Interactive. And good morning. Welcome to the show. Here's a look at my top five for this week from Studio 5. At number five. So I'm going to say that again, and I'm talking to people that's all the way in the back with a lot of space around them. They in the lawn. Chicago! Chicago wraps its annual Lollapalooza Music Festival. And the Windy City's own Chance the Rapper is among the biggest highlights. Chance joined Francis and the Lights for May I Have This Dance and even performed the famous dance number. May I have this dance? At number four, we head to Canton, Ohio with congratulations to Kurt Warner. You know, I've come to appreciate that the greatest gift any parent can give their child is saying yes to spending time with them. Paying tribute to his father, the former Arizona Cardinal and St. Louis Ram, is the first Iowa native inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. Warner is a class act and a vocal man of faith. What happened on the cross ultimately defines Jesus and defines all of us. And what many saw as a loss um, was our greatest win. He won. For number three, we continue at this year's NFL Hall of Fame induction. If this was my last day on earth, and this my final speech. Where NFL superstar LaDainian Tomlinson issues a powerful call for racial unity, paying tribute to his great-great-great-grandfather, George. 170 years ago, George was brought here in chains on a slave ship from West Africa. His last name, Tomlinson, was given to him by the man who owned him. What extraordinary courage it must have taken for him to rebuild his life after the life he was born to was stolen. My name began with the man who owned my great-great-great-grandfather. Now, it's proudly carried by me, my children, my extended family. The family legacy that began in such a cruel way has given birth to generations of successful, caring Tomlinsons. I firmly be believe that God chose me to help bring two races together under one last name, Tomlinson. At number two. I married April. I'm sorry, you carried April? No, I married her. Fans of TV's most family-friendly show, The Middle, are getting a final season to say goodbye. The show debuted in 2009. And in this tweet, ABC announced the end of one of its longest-running comedies. Gracie Peterson texted me asking me what time we'll be home. That's it, we gotta move. Come on, Rick. They like you and they're cute. At number one. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ministry could be the next move for Hillary Clinton. That's revealed in the Atlantic article on the forthcoming devotional from Clinton's pastor, called Strong for a Moment Like This. It's based on correspondence and scriptures he used to send her daily. Thank you for answering the charge given to us by Jesus as Matthew records. To feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, welcome the stranger. According to the Atlantic story, Clinton recently told her pastor she wants to preach. Scripture tells us that faith without works is dead. 
Faith without works is indeed dead. Now, you may be surprised to learn that Hillary Clinton is considering a move to the ministry, but it's actually not the very first time that this has been revealed. Back in 1994, the Newsweek editor Kenneth Woodward said that Clinton shared that with him, that she was thinking about a career in ministry and thought that that would actually be her life's calling. The book is called Strong for a Moment Like This, is written by Clinton's pastor, and it's based on devotionals he started sending her back in 2015 after she decided to run for president. And of course, that lasted for more than a year. He said he would get up every morning at four o'clock. He'd find scripture for her. He would send it to her and send her a personal devotional every single day. Clinton, of course, spent a lot of time in Chicago. And that brings us to another story in the top five. And that is Chance the Rapper debuting or coming out at Lollapalooza and performing for the hometown crew. I visited Chicago just last week. And one thing I learned about Chance the Rapper, certainly know that he's a Christian. He raps about his faith. He talks about his faith all the time. Um, but one nice thing I learned about him is he's been actually grinding out in Chicago for years. We've seen a lot of him in the last two years, but he's been on this journey for a very long time. Kurt Warner inducted into the Hall of Fame. No surprise there. Third time is the charm. Nice to see that happen. And it is a beautiful lesson he shared as a father that we need to spend more time with our children. And that gift is the gift that keeps on giving. Ladanian Tomlinson also inducted into the Hall of Fame. What a beautiful story. If you have not seen the speech that he gave accepting that award and that honor, you need to run, not walk to your computer, run to see it. It is a beautiful speech on racial unity. He talks about his great, great, great grandfather, and he actually visited the land where his grandfather worked and toiled as a slave and visited the slave quarters. What a beautiful story there and what a passionate plea. He is also a man of faith and says he knows that God promised him that if he would be faithful to him, God would show him things he could never imagine. And that includes being inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. For the latest in entertainment news, be sure to check out my weekly show, Studio 5. It is available on Roku, Apple TV. Of course, you can also watch it online at CBN.com slash Studio 5. Up next, the man who took on the National Football League and brought awareness to a life-changing disease. You'll meet Dr. Bennett Omalu right after this break, so don't go away. Nearly 15 years ago, after viewing slides of deceased NFL players, Dr. Bennett Omalu made a game-changing and life-changing diagnosis. His research should have been welcomed. Instead, it was met with resistance, and he was labeled a security risk. Take a look. Playing sports is fun, builds character, and teaches teamwork. But letting children play contact sports can be more dangerous than parents realize. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE, is a condition discovered by Dr. Bennett Omalu and is caused by head trauma. People with CTE have serious and sometimes life-threatening brain damage, similar to Alzheimer's. The disease is the subject of the movie Concussion, where Dr. Omalu is played by Will Smith. In the book, Truth Doesn't Have a Side, Dr. Omalu shares the true cost of playing contact sports and how to keep your kids safe on the field. And the author of Truth Doesn't Have a Side, Dr. Bennett Omalo, joins us now. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, great book. I have to say many people would be surprised at even the conditions of your birth. I feel like you were born for this job. You were born in Nigeria during a civil war. How difficult was your childhood? Well, uh, my childhood, um, my, I was born as a refugee mm -hmm. um, in a dilapidated refugee hospital. The first two or three years of my life, I suffered malnutrition. I suffered the psychological traumas of war. And um, growing up, I began to struggle with depression mm -hmm. and very low self-esteem. I, I was just a very socially maladjusted child. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, I discovered that we all are members of one another. Yeah. I began to discover my faith journey. Beautiful. That brought beautiful, me to America. A beautiful journey. Now, your very name has special significance. Yeah. Tell us what it means. 
Well, um, the, in fact, the day I was born, my father was hit by one of the numerous bombs dropped by the Nigerian armed forces. Mm -hmm. So he, the Catholic charities actually lifted his body to place it in the truck for the mass grave and he groaned. Mm -hmm. He was brought to the same refugee hospital where I was. A couple of weeks later, when he was relatively um, recovering, yeah. I was placed, I was handed over to him, placed me in his bosom, and he gave me the name Bennett. Okay. Said for Bennett, he's a blessing unto my life, mm -hmm. from the French word Benoit, yeah. uh, to bless. Mm -hmm. And then he gave me a middle name, Fakandu, an African name, mm -hmm. which means life is the greatest gift of all. And that was the also the name of the doctor who yes, delivered you? Yes, that delivered me, mm -hmm. Dr. Fakando. Yeah. And ironically, my last name, Omalo, actually is a shortened form of my real last name, which is Onye Malukube. Oh, we, we, Onye we Malukube. appreciate Omalo. <laughs> 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 yes. uh, my, uh, what it really means is, mm -hmm. he who knows must mm -hmm. come forth and speak. He who knows must come forth and speak. Yeah. So you see, my journey yeah. in America is an epitome of my three names. Absolutely. <laughs> now, in terms of he who knows must come forth and speak, in 2003, you're viewing slides of a deceased NFL player's brain. Yes. What do you discover? Well, I saw changes in his brain that had not been described before in the brains of athletes outside boxes. Mm. I, you know, I was still struggling with depression. I thought I was being delusional. Wow. So I took it to other doctors mm -hmm. to confirm what I was seeing. They confirmed uh, what I saw. They were much older, more experienced doctors. So the consensus was to give it a name mm. that, of course, Mike Webster was not a boxer. Yeah. But I, as a forensic pathologist, I knew that I couldn't just give it any name I wanted, like dementia, footballitica, or mm -hmm. Bennett or Malo's disease, or mm -hmm. Mike Webster's disease. Right. I recognized this was an occupational hazard, which will end up in the court of law. And there is a Dobbert standard in the American legal system that states that for scientific evidence to be admitted as evidence in the court of law, it needs to have precedence. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back to the time of Hippocrates okay. to search yeah. what are the names in the literature I could use yeah. for this disease. Yeah. And chronic traumatic encephalopathy wasn't difficult for mm -hmm. me because chronic traumatic encephalopathy sounds intellectually sophisticated yeah. and it had a good acronym. Mm -hmm. And actually chronic traumatic encephalopathy doesn't really mean anything, <laughs> to be honest with wow. you, because that, that was this fear mm -hmm. in me that look, I could be wrong. Uh -huh. So if I were proven wrong down the road, I would have some wiggle room to get up. Oh, after all, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we know from, from your experience with that football player, you meet him on the autopsy table uh, and you, you discover this and you reveal this. People, I would think that this medical knowledge, this advantage would be celebrated, but that wasn't the case for your discovery. Why do you think so? Yeah, it wasn't. The NFL uh, came after me, uh, not just the NFL, fellow doctors, mm -hmm. including the doctors who are doing research on CTE today, yeah. including the National Institute of Health. Yeah. Everybody came after me, marginalized me, ostracized me, dismissed me. In fact, I was labeled dangerous. Mm -hmm. Some insinuated I was practicing African voodoo medicine. But you know, I looked above that because I practice my faith in my science and my science in my faith. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I believe that like Ephesians tells us, Ephesians chapter four, that we are all one body, one spirit, one hope in Christ, bound together by the bond of peace. Yes. Whatever we do for the least of us, we do for all of us, because we are all members of one another. Absolutely. And God is preeminent in all things. Mm -hmm. God is truth. God is life. God is light. Mm -hmm. As long as you profess the truth of God, come what may, the truth will prevail. Mm -hmm. As long as it is for the good of all. Absolutely. So I believed what I saw was for the good of all, yeah. including the good of football, yeah. especially our children. Our children are gates of the life of God, mm -hmm. the spirit of God. God gives us the gift of his spirit and life in a child. Yeah. 
And as Christians, we are bound to protect, nourish, and cherish that gift of life because mm -hmm. it's the greatest gift of all. Absolutely. Having said that as a Christian, mm -hmm. knowing what we know today in 2017, mm -hmm. There is no reason whatsoever any child under the age of 18 in America should continue to play the high impact, high contact collision sports. Yeah. The big six are football, ice hockey, mixed martial arts, rugby, boxing, and wrestling. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. If your child plays even just one season yeah. of football, mm -hmm. with or without a helmet, there is a 100% risk exposure to permanent brain damage. 100%. 100% risk exposure because there is no safe blow to the head. And studies have been done mm -hmm. in high school students who have played just for one season. And after one season, with or without a helmet, yeah. with or without concussions, their brains show evidence of brain damage. And we see today that there are more than 3 million children from 6 to 18 playing football alone. Yes, children should play the non-contact, non-impact non sports. Mm -hmm. There are so many of them. You mm -hmm. could visit the International Olympic Committee, like I explained in my book. Mm -hmm. Non-contact sports like track and field, swimming, volleyball, basketball, um, badminton, table tennis, lawn tennis. Mm. You know, there was a study, if I may share this, mm -hmm. that came out of Sweden last year that shocked even me. Mm -hmm. They looked at 1.1 million children over 41 years. Wow. It shows that if you suffer at least one concussion in sports, you're more likely to die before the age of 42 for, through violent means. You have a two to four times increased risk of committing suicide. You have a two to four times increased risk of suffering psychiatric illnesses, including major depression. You have much more increased risk of engaging in violent behavior, mm -hmm. criminal behavior, mm -hmm. becoming a drug addict, and abusing alcohol. Wow. Real quick before I let you go, I had the privilege of interviewing Will Smith and seeing the film Concussion. Has the concussion film made a difference? Yes, I call it the Will Smith effect. Uh -huh. the, what I couldn't do in 15 years, the movie did in one year. Wow. There's no question about it. The mm. concussion movie has been a very successful movie. Mm. It has impacted society and it has permeated the fabric of society. And I think it's because of the good spirit of Will Smith. Mm. Will Smith is a shining light. He's, he's a wonderful human being. Mm. And I think because of the, the love in his heart, he is, um, he's helped us to spread this good message. Let us please protect our children. No, oh, indeed, indeed. I tell you, sitting here with you and having seen the film and interviewed him, he truly captured you. You had yes. to have seen yourself <laughs> on that screen. Yes. No, my guest <laughs> collision. <laughs> he got it. Your voice, the laugh. He, he even it says did. that your laugh is a testament to what it means to be an American. He yes. says that in the book. I, I enjoyed reading that. Yes. Well, if you would like to know more from <laughs> Dr. Bennett Amalo and the dangers of CTE and the scandalous cover-up, his book is called Truth Doesn't Have a Side, and you can find it wherever books are sold. Dr. Amalo, thank you so thank much. You so it much. was God a pleasure. Coming up, her parents worked long hours and were not always home. I was missing some of that affection, needing that, those hugs and that embrace. Find out how her desire for love and affection sent her on a downward spiral away from God when we return. Every day, Sophia Ruffin breaks out her smartphone and busts political correctness. That's because Sophia has done something the social justice warriors say cannot be done. She's been delivered from a lesbian lifestyle. Give me, give me, give me some love. Let Sophia Ruffin hosts a daily live show on Facebook, where thousands of viewers listen to her candidly share her story of how she was delivered from homosexuality. Many people say, once gay, always gay, or they feel you can be delivered from everything but homosexuality. People can be free from homosexuality. God is a deliverer. Sophia's popularity as a minister of the gospel is a far cry from her lonely days growing up in Chicago. Sophia's mom worked long hours, and her dad often was at home. I was missing some of that affection, needing that, those hugs and that embrace. In third grade, she developed a crush on a female teacher who affirmed her and encouraged her. She called me pretty. Come here, pretty girl. 
she started doing my hair, I would feel different. I couldn't share with anybody because I knew that it wasn't right. I knew the girls are supposed to like boys. Sophia says early on she preferred hanging out with boys and playing basketball with them. She began to be bullied and Sophia resorted to the only thing she knew how to do, fight. When people would say, name, call me Dyke, tomboy, or butch, I would just outright fight them. Then when Sophia was 10, something happened that only added to her confusion. She was molested and the abuse lasted for four years. She never told anyone about it. And I just felt like, why me? Then I really despised God because not only did I feel like I'm gay, I'm born gay, now I'm, you know, molested and violated. By now, Sophia's basketball skills were so advanced that when she went to high school, she made the varsity girls basketball team. And on the varsity team, we had some young ladies that was openly in the homosexual lifestyle. And I felt like, wow, I finally found people that are like me and they okay with it. Sophia began wearing baggy clothes and eventually threw away anything that connected her to feminine identity. I was ready to move into and be who I felt I was born to be and I was a man. In her junior year, Sophia started having relationships with other girls. She went to college on a basketball scholarship where she fully embraced lesbianism and her identity as a man. By this time, her mother Doris knew. My heart was broken. It was broken to pieces. Sophia lived as a lesbian for 10 years. Her mom and many others prayed for her. I would say, look God, this is your child. You only loaned it to me. She belongs to you. So you gonna have to do what's need to be done. I didn't get to a low point where I was gonna give up on her. Sophia had a Christian friend named Devin who was persistent in inviting her to church. Finally, she accepted her invitation. While there, something strange happened. And I kept saying, I can't breathe. I start hyperventilating and I was holding their hands just like, I can't breathe, help. I was screaming for help. And I remember her tapping her chest and saying, Devin, I can't breathe. And at that moment, I knew like, God, you're now taking her breath away, which means for me that when God comes and take her breath away, that means he's breathing in new life. It was like God said, now I got my daughter. Sophia says she heard God telling her to go to the front of the church. And the whole time I'm talking back to him, I said, but please, because if you let me down and you don't protect me like you said you are, this is it. I'll never do this again. It won't be a second shot. And God kept saying, trust me with your life. I got you. I wasn't just going to the altar to say the sinner's prayer. I was going to give my whole life to the God that apprehended me in the service with a power that was greater than me. When Sophia reached the front, the pastor, Apostle Tim Brinson, began to pray with her. I saw a person that was asking Father God, I want to change, but will you help me? Is this real? And I cried out and I lifted my hands and I said I was sorry. And it wasn't a, it was a genuine sorry. I was sorry that I misunderstood who he was. I was sorry that I, I had such a anger towards him. And I was really sorry for everything that I had done. And when I accepted Christ as my personal savior, it wasn't me asking God, to come into my life just as a cliche. Me asking was him to be Father, Lord, God of my life, and I accepted him for real. Sophia says over the next four years, God began a transformation in her heart and mind to make her into the woman he created her to be. On Mother's Day, Sophia surprised her mom and came to church dressed like a lady. And I looked so Oh, she is so beautiful. And she opened her arms really wide. And I got up and I ran to my mom. And the embrace, the embrace 
that she gave me, I forgot about all the years that I didn't get it. She held me and she says, Sophia, my baby, you back. You look so pretty. I love you. I miss you. My baby is back. Thank God, thank you for allowing her to live, to see that her prayers, her love, her believing in me and trusting that you was not in vain. I got my identity back. God supernaturally allowed me to see with as a purity and holiness. He delivered the whole, the whole being was delivered. Free! As a minister and author of four books, Sophia helps to lead others out of the homosexual lifestyle and find healing and freedom in Jesus Christ. So hold on to his word and just believe, even if you got a limp to him, limp your way, crawl your way, get to him. He's the only one that can set you free. He is indeed the only one who can set you free. To the parents out there, to the family members who are praying for someone in your family to be delivered, let Sophia's story be an encouragement to you that God is indeed a deliverer. That is the headline I take away from that entire story. God is a deliverer. Now to you who may be struggling with any difficulty, any pain, any hurt, any concern, know this, God is a deliverer. Two key points I saw in Sophia's story. The first was she made the decision that she was ready to do wrong and take on that lifestyle. But she also made the decision she was ready to do right and give God a try and to try him and to trust him. And when she met him there, he was faithful and just to reward her. So if you make that decision today that you are ready for change, you are ready for transformation, I've got good news for you. God is ready to meet you exactly where you are. Just call upon his name. And you know, we have got lots of people waiting to hear from you, standing by the phones at 800-700-7000. They're waiting to hear from you and you will be blessed. Take this scripture with you. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength. In him will I trust. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye and God bless.